Now let's consider Mayan astronomy. Here you see a page from the document, the Mayan Codex, which was a way of deciphering the entire hieroglyphic system of the Mayans and understanding how they used astronomy hundreds of years ago. We have to look at the situation of pre-Columbian America. There were five large civilizations in Central America. The Almec, who were probably the originators of one of the Mayan long count calendars. The Zapotec, the Mayan, who were the first complex society around 2000 BC. Their classical period ran from about 250 to 900 after Christ. The Aztec, who ran from 1300 till the arrival of Cortes, and the Inca, from about 1440 until their conquest by the Spanish Pizarro in 1533. All four of those major civilizations fell to the Spanish, and of these, the Mayans had the most sophisticated mathematical astronomy. The Mayans kept extensive written records. Most of these, unfortunately, were burned shortly after Cortes arrived as devilish or pagan. Literally only five from probably thousands of Mayan manuscripts survive. They exist on single sheets of bark paper cloth, very long in a sort of folded scroll pattern, up to six or seven meters long and 22 centimeters wide. The most famous of these is the Dresden Codex. It was probably sent to Emperor Charles V by Cortes as a sign of his conquest in 1519. And then it was purchased by the Royal Library at Dresden from a private Italian owner in 1739. Scientists and anthropologists studied this for centuries before they were able to decode it. It has two numerical systems based on 5 and 20 and a very elaborate system of symbolic or hieroglyphic writing that was finally deciphered with great difficulty in the 1970s. Mayan calendars are complex. There are three different kinds, religious calendars, civil calendars, and the so-called long count calendars. The Mayans kept almanacs for telling farmers when to plant and harvest and where the various food sources might be found throughout the season. They had multiplication tables included for their calendric computations. They also were superstitious, so they had tables of luck to be expected on each day of their long cycles. Their longest cycle ran up to 7,200 days, about 20 of our years. They didn't recognize the fractional days in the year, so they didn't use intercalculation as we do in the Julian calendar. They just let the calendars run and eventually they'd get out of sync with the solar year. The resulting departure of the months from the seasons was not that significant for a tropical culture because they didn't have a planting cycle of the kind you'd have at high northern or southern latitudes. The season really doesn't vary that much in the tropics. They counted days from the beginning of a cycle for an amazing 2.9 billion days. That's close to 8,000 years. In their cosmology, the universe is destroyed and reborn at the end of each cycle, although they don't say why. They had a placeholder notation to keep track of these large numbers. They did calculations extending past 63 million years ago into previous universes in their cosmology. The current cycle began about 3100 BC. There's no known significance to the end date. The scare in 2012 was due to an incorrect interpretation of the long count. Here are some animated sequences showing Mayan calendars. The infinite regress of the pattern in the spiral is extraordinary. And the mechanical motions of the calendar chain were reconstructed from relics that were found at various Mayan sites. The 2012 scare, as I said, was due to a misreading of the primary source material. Stephen Colbert had fun with this. The following year, he gave the Mayans a pretty hard time about having miscalculated the end of the world. But we should worry about this because creating a calendar is a non-trivial task, and the Mayans were actually pretty good at it. Central to the Mayan calendar and to their cosmology was Venus. This is the only world culture where Venus plays such a central role in astronomy. Venus has a 260-day period which is built into their primal religious calendar. And it's based on the cycle of Venus visibility, which relates, as you can see on the right, from Venus's interior orbit to the Earth going around the Sun, where there is roughly a week 
when it's very close to the sun rising and setting, another period of time, 260 days, when it's an evening star, a time when it's below the horizon, almost two months, and another period of about 250 days when it's a morning star. The Dresden Codex contains eclipse tables and also detailed tables of where to see Venus at different times. Venus was viewed as a propitious object for the starting of wars or for major events to do with the rulers. They timed their warfare and other events according to the appearance of Venus. Here's part of the Dresden Codex which shows the Venus cycle built into the calculation. They also did alignment astronomy based on observations. If we look here at the Caracol at Chichen Itza in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, it almost looks like an observatory, like a modern telescope in a dome. Of course it wasn't. Telescopes would not be invented for over a millennium. But inside this rock construction, the priests would be able to look out at the sky and use sight lines to look at Venus and the evening and morning sky. So this was a central part of their cosmology, the construction of such observation sites. And here we see the diagram, which makes it clear that these huge stone constructions, made with fairly primitive tools, were exquisitely aligned within less than a degree of the cardinal points to be able to make such sight lines to Venus reliably. At Teotihuacan, northeast of Mexico City, the city of the gods, we see a 52-year calendar cycle and a 260-day calendar also marked into carvings on the temples. And the alignment of this huge pyramid is very particularly 15 degrees east of north to the Pleiades, because the Pleiades were another object of their investigation and study. And that's the end of this topic.